Hey everyone. I don't know if, like me, when you were growing up, your parents or carers uh, felt part of their responsibility was to encourage and teach you to be thankful, to recognise good things in your life uh, and say thank you to the appropriate people. So I can remember being at Sunday school many times and us being asked the question, you know, what are you thankful for today? And we talk there and, you know, scratch our heads and think, well, I'm thankful for my Transformer toys or I played football this week or, you know, or you, you revert to the standard ones, a roof over my head. Thankful for that. Um, which is great. Uh, the time of year me and my brother both really disliked being thankful was Christmas. Not that we weren't thankful for presents or thank you for Christmas, but for some reason writing thank you letters was just such a task. It just felt like such a burden and we're sort of having to be forced to, you know, write to some un uncle or auntie we hardly ever saw, thank you for the thing I didn't really like. You know, we've got to be thankful. And that was a great intent, you know, from my parents and from yours. But is thankfulness about what's good in our lives? Because what about suffering? You know, that's what we're looking at, isn't it? You know, if my life's good and I have the things I want and I'm feeling buoyant and, and stuff's opening up, then I'm not a really thankful person. I can be really thankful. But if things are hard or difficult, have I got much to be thankful for? Or do I merely have to then sort of resign myself or, you know, come on, let's think of all, think of something to be thankful for. Well, I'm thank you for the planets that sit in different locations around the universe that through their gravitational pulls keep the Earth where it exactly is. Or, you know, thank you for the tarmac I'm driving this car on. Or, you know, trying to almost not make something up. But you hear what I'm saying. Try and think of something to be thankful for. What if thankfulness was a wide open door? What if it is a highway, broad and wide? What if it's not this narrow road of what we're feeling thankful for, all the good things in our lives? Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, in all circumstances, in everything, be thankful, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything. It means every little part of your life to be thankful. What? Wait a minute, Paul. You don't know about my life. You know, you don't know all of these things that are going on. What about this? Is really painful or difficult or hard? This is causing me stress or pain. Be thankful for it. I guess I never really understood that verse until I listened to a testimony from a lady called Elaine. She uh, lives in Eritrea and she was arrested for her faith. Uh, Eritrea, a huge amount of Christians are seriously persecuted. She ended up in a prison camp where she was locked in, in, in a metal shipping container. That was her prison. Boiling in the day, scorching, and then freezing cold at night. And she was regularly beaten. And one day she was being beaten and she turned to her captor and was just said, thank you for what you're doing. <laughs> And the captain was like, what, what do you mean? Like, what are you on about? You know, I'm here. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to make you not a Christian. She said, no, you can just carry on. She said, I know your job is to beat me. But my job is to be thankful and to trust in my Lord. She saw something so magnificent that set her so free. Because this word, thankful, that Paul uses in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 is the Greek word eucharisto. It's where the word eucharist comes from, a word that describes communion, the breaking of bread, this act when we remember sacrifice, where we come and we remember pain and suffering. It's that thankfulness. It's made up of two words, good and grace. Yeah, Thankfulness is good grace. Thankfulness recognises that the grace of God is so good it can work in everything. Elaine wasn't a lunatic. She's not off the planet. She's not super spiritual. She's not thankful for the beatings, for the pain. She's not thankful for her prison cell because she loves scorching heat and freezing cold. She knows that in all circumstances, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is good enough to be at work. And therefore, thankfulness is her embracing every single part, every little individual part of her life. 
And the thankfulness is what ties it together and means it's soaked in the grace, in the good grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thankfulness versus suffering. Wow. Thankfulness in suffering. So today, I'm not pretending that your suffering doesn't hurt. I'm not pretending that maybe you feel miles away from God. But I am declaring to you that thankfulness is a recognition that the grace of God is so good that nothing can stop it. That thankfulness is embracing the hurting parts and the miserable parts and discouraged parts and seeing that Christ is there, that he is in them. And therefore I can be thankful for him within the thing, that he's not far away, that he's not disconnected, he's not only in the good things, but he is in and through all things. I pray that myself and I pray that you today, like Elaine, that everything would be soaked in thankfulness, the thankfulness that brings the grace of God in and through all things. God bless you today. Love.